Does the Delta variant spread as easily as chickenpox? An internal report by the U.S. Disease Center suggests it does, and that it may also be equally transmissible in people who have been vaccinated. For a closer look, we're joined by Dr. Bharat Pankhania, Senior Clinical Lecturer at College of Medicine and Health at the University of Exeter. He joins us live from Bath. Firstly, what do you make of this report that it's as contagious as chickenpox and causes more severe illness? So we are well aware that the Delta variant was more infectious and this report confirms it. So we had calculated that it was about three to four times more infectious. What is more worrisome is not only is it more infectious, but the early reports from Centers for Disease Control seem to indicate that it is also more disease causing and that there may be breakthrough infections in people who have been immunized, who then have severe illness. That is the worrisome bit. So, Dr. Pankania, you know, the fact that these findings suggest that it's more disease causing, that there are potentially these breakthroughs in already vaccinated people, how will the findings then affect global efforts to recover from this pandemic? So, the good thing is that if it is a case of reformulating the vaccines, we can do that to. Um, mirror the Delta variant compared to the ancestral strain. That's the easy bit. The harder bit is making enough vaccines to immunize globally. And I have been advocating for several months now exactly for these sort of situations, which is improve the capacity to manufacture vaccines globally rather than leave it in the hands of the pharmaceutical company. So when we have a situation like this, we, we need to reformulate the vaccines, we need to immunize many more people. We've already got the plants set up to make the vaccine, the reformulated vaccine, and immunize many more people. Dr. Pankania, just to clarify for us, are you, are you saying that if we can't manufacture enough vaccines quickly enough, then this Delta variant may sort of get round the current vaccines that we do have? Yes, indeed, of course. So we are always wary of vaccine escape uh, variants. And to keep up with it, like Israel is doing, it is giving boosters to its population. But the boosters are reformulated to mirror the Delta variant. So if you want to make a vaccine to mirror the Delta variant in circulation or its successor, you need a lot of vaccines if you are pushed into the corner of having to re-immunize. Dr. Pankhania, so much has been said about treating the COVID-19 pandemic as endemic uh, going forward. What minimum level of vaccination coverage would you consider comfortable to consider uh, that being the case, to, to consider it as endemic? So with respect to what we call endemic means it is there and it is there permanently in the circulating population. And if it is there all the time, it will continue to cause outbreaks and infections. What we are aiming for is to remove it, i.e. COVID zero. That's going to be very difficult globally. But in terms of achieving what we call herd immunity, in other words, most of the population is, in, is immunized or protected. It is in the higher orders now, because we have a Delta variant, which is more infectious. So previously, I would have said 75% immunity is a comfortable uh, target to aim for. Now, with a more infectious variant, we need to aim for 85% and above, just to compensate for the more infectious Delta variant. How optimistic are you that we'll get there then, Dr. Pankhania? I mean, even countries like Australia, are under 20 percent immunized so far. I'm very concerned and I go back to my original statement, which is a failure to enable many parts of the world to manufacture the vaccines so that humanity can be saved rather than pharmaceutical proprietary financial interests. We need a global order to enable the manufacture of vaccines. Uh, uh, minus the patent protections and intellectual right protections. So I'm really pleased that President Joe Biden, the new president at the United States, has signaled 
that we need to relax the patent laws. We need the European Union, United Kingdom, Sweden and Australia to fall in line with enabling ex extra manufacture of vaccines in many parts of the world. All right, many thanks, Dr. Bar Dr. Pankania, thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you.